Botting software is one of RuneScape's biggest long-term threats, but at one point in time, it actually helped save the game and its history in more ways than one. For this story, we have to take it all the way back to RuneScape Classic, the original version of RuneScape but maybe not the time period you were expecting. This story starts long after RuneScape 2 had launched, 2009 to be exact. RuneScape Classic, although closed to most of the public, was still online and playable. To try and cut costs and prevent rule breaking, the free-to-play servers were closed in 2005. And in early 2006, it was decided if your account hadn't logged into the servers in the last six months, you'd be locked out completely. Anyone who's played RuneScape RuneScape for a long period of time has definitely taken a six month break before. Just imagine if this still existed today and it's like, oops, there goes 3,000 hours of my life. <laughs> You'd think with such harsh restrictions in place, the game would die a quick death, but it still managed to keep around 200, sometimes 300 players online during peak hours. Not bad for a game that hadn't had a legitimate update since the launch of the Nintendo DS. However, the real action was on private servers. Tech-savvy players had figured out a way to emulate RuneScape Classic servers and make their own versions of the game with no restrictions on who could play. But those of you who have been gaming for a while know private servers for games, especially RuneScape, are a big no-no. Since Classic was still online, although hard to access, these private servers were taking away a decent chunk of Jagex's players and, as a result, MONEY! But it actually makes a lot of sense why players were flocking to these servers, despite Jagex heavily looking down upon them and not always being the safest. Besides not being able to get into the official classic servers, 2009 was a pretty bad year for RuneScape 2. Jagex imposed item and gold trading restrictions and killed PvP combat entirely by making the wilderness a safe zone. Why? to try and prevent real-world trading, the process of buying and selling RuneScape items and gold for real money. But this solution sucked, because it didn't just punish rule-breaking players, it made everyone's experience with the game worse. So players went looking for nostalgia, found RuneScape Classic, saw that they couldn't get in, and sought out private servers. It didn't take long for Jagex to reach out to these server owners and begin shutting them down. But of course, new ones would pop up to take their place. So Jagex made a pretty smart move and just decided to give the people what they wanted. In September of 2009, a news post was made saying that not only was Jagex going to reopen classic servers to the public, they had some very ambitious plans. Just like I used to have some pretty ambitious plans to build a game like RuneScape. During my teen years, I spent months building this game, stumbling through an ancient programming language and just trying to make something that didn't look like complete garbage. But I never had the technical know-how to finish it. It would have been a lot easier with today's sponsor, Southern New Hampshire University. SNHU has one of the largest accredited non-profit online degree offerings in the country, and I want to talk to you about their game development program. In this program taught by faculty with real-world experience, you'll learn programming languages like C++, C Sharp, and even Java, which is perfect for those who want to make RuneLite plugins. You'll also learn how to make realistic and dynamic gameplay experiences with AI, game physics, 2D and 3D graphics, and more. Plus, you'll even get taught how to make your own 3D models. Best of all, SNHU is super affordable and has some of the lowest online tuition rates in the nation. Go to snhu.edu slash colonello in the description to learn more. Now, before we discuss Jagex's wild plans for Classic, maybe I should discuss why Classic servers became so restricted in the first place. It was botting software. Classic's bot detection was pretty primitive, and by that, I mean it probably didn't exist. In RuneScape 2, if you were to download a bot client and start up a script, it's likely you'd be randomly banned sometime within the next few days to weeks, and you'd probably score yourself a nice little virus on the family computer. Yeah, good luck explaining that one to mom, again. Now, you wouldn't get banned because someone saw you, thought you were botting, and reported you, but because they had put automated 
automated checks in place to make sure that you were not. Mouse movements, clicks, key presses, and more are recorded by Jagex's systems, even today, to try and find botters. Back in Classic, catching botters was much trickier. Today, bots have to pretend to be human. You know, move the mouse naturally, log out every so often to take breaks, and don't bot your thieving level so high it goes negative. Yeah, that was a thing that actually happened in Classic. I'm not joking. Back in Classic, botters didn't have to worry about a lot of stuff. Clicks and key presses weren't monitored, so you could get away with some pretty ridiculous exploits. Bots didn't emulate clicks, they manipulated network packets. Those are the things that get sent back and forth between your game client and RuneScape server. For example, if you were to click somewhere on the map, it would send a network packet off to Jagex's servers to tell them that you did that and to move your character there. My favorite example of how much these packets could be abused is on these guards near the fight arena. Unlike normal guards, they don't have the pickpocket option, so you couldn't train thieving on them, unless you used a bot client to manipulate your packets. You could trick the game into thinking you're thieving from normal guards and actually be able to pickpocket them. Craziest of all, someone who I'll introduce later trained their thieving to 99 doing this. Another good example is with this iron rock cluster in Varrock. Let's say you wanted to mine all three rocks. To reach this diagonal one, your character would need to walk to it, then mine it. Instead, if you had a bot to manipulate packets, the bot would just send the action request to mine the rock and not the movement request, and your character would mine the rock diagonally without moving. Being able to do ridiculous stuff like that and not getting banned for it is just unthinkable in today's times. So how did classic players get away with such blatant rule breaking. Well, RuneScape Classic experts believed that Classic didn't have any bot detection at all. Every major ban wave came from Jagex sort of tricking botters with small changes made to the code. 2006 was the last major ban wave for RuneScape Classic. Jagex figured out who was botting by adding an extra number to the deposit and withdraw packets. So for example, every time you deposited or withdrew an item, from your bank, the game client would send that packet to the server to let it know. Assuming you were playing on the official RuneScape client and not using a bot script, you would send the new correct packet. But players still using bot scripts didn't know that an extra number had been added to the end of the packet, so their scripts would send the old incorrect ones. All Jagex had to do was ban anyone who sent the wrong packet. This ban wave led to a staggering 5,000 accounts ban which for Classic was humongous. Humongous. It pretty much cut the active player count of the game in half. Every other ban wave in RuneScape Classic's history had this same detection method, a slight change that would trick botters. So it makes sense that Jagex didn't want Classic to be open to the public all the time. They couldn't realistically monitor it to make sure nobody was cheating. So going back to the 2009 news post, how did Jagex expect not to run into this exact same issue when Classic did reopen to the public? Well, by avoiding it completely. Jagex planned to offer players the ability to rent and administer their own Classic servers from Jagex. Server owners could turn cheats on and off as they pleased, whitelist who could join, and even give their friends moderator ranks. The official servers would stay online, but they would still be locked to just those who had access from before. New players would only be allowed to access the player-owned servers. After all this hype and cool feature teasing, Jagex canceled everything and instead just reopened Classic to the public for two weeks. But to be fair to Jagex, it's a little bit better than it sounds. Paying members who logged in during those two weeks could continue to play Classic after the two weeks were over. Those who didn't would have to wait until it reopened again. Over the next few years, Jagex planned to reopen Classic to the public for a few weeks, close it again for about six months, and repeat. I'm assuming they decided on this strategy because it wouldn't cost nearly as much 
launch as Retrofitting Classic to allow for custom servers. Although it was a bit of a letdown, I'm pretty thankful for these reopenings because had it not been for the ones in 2011, I probably would have never got the chance to play. Now, you're probably still wondering, what about bots? Did Jagex add any sort of bot protection this time around? Yes, but no. At the time, RuneScape 2 was going under a slight redesign under the hood. Maud Duncan was working on the ability to change your character's display name. Yeah, no more username you made in fourth grade. Now you could pick something cool. Because players in Classic could send messages to players on RuneScape 2, Classic would need some changes in order to support this new display name system. While adding this change, they also borrowed some techniques from RuneScape 2 to make decompiling RuneScape Classic's client harder. This would mean getting your hands on the code and reverse engineering it would become much trickier. They also added the ability to withdraw or deposit all of an item in your banker inventory, or put in your own custom number. For example, you could withdraw something like 13 trout. Previously, you could withdraw or deposit small amounts, like one at a time, five at a time, 250, and so on. You had no other choice but to sit there and spam click the withdraw or deposit amount until you did the amount you actually wanted. All of these changes broke most of the now very old bot clients that players were using. You'd think at this point players would just give up on botting. It's 2009 and they're botting a game made for Windows 2000, but you'd be surprised. Players who bought it in RuneScape Classic didn't do so for the reasons that people do today. Today, when someone uses a bot, it's usually for one of two reasons. They want to trade gold or their accounts for real money, or to level up someone else's accounts quickly without doing any of the work. Overall, bots hurt the game's economy and player experience. They cause a lot of resources to drop to dirt cheap levels and ruin money-making methods that should be available to real low to med level players. Classic was much different though. What could somebody gain by farming gold in a game with maybe a few hundred active players? Well, nothing. There was no major online marketplace to buy and sell accounts or gold on RuneScape Classic. I'm sure some private back alley sales happened, but that's about it. It seems that the average player who bought it was doing so for the love of the game, as weird as that sounds. These were players who still enjoyed Classic so much to keep playing all these years after it was discontinued. They knew the alternatives weren't the same or would get shut down, and probably didn't have the time or patience anymore to grind out the boring stuff. Virtually everyone around them was already botting. Jagex didn't seem to enforce the rules, so everyone figured, why not? Although bots were the reason Classic became so restricted in the first place, they were now keeping it alive. Classic, for a lot of people, had changed from from a grindy, difficult game to an idle game that they would sometimes PK on. I'm not endorsing botting in any way by saying this, but it is a pretty interesting concept. But now it's 2009, every piece of botting software is now broken, and the game is open to the public for two weeks. It saw a huge influx of new, legitimate players, but it wouldn't last long. For anyone that's never played Classic, good. I'm just kidding, but this game really tested your patience. Anything you wanted to do in RuneScape 2 was infinitely easier than in Classic. You had to enter a CAPTCHA every 10 minutes or so, couldn't eat during combat, couldn't escape from combat until three rounds in, so you're probably already dead by then. You can fail to chop a tree, light a fire, cast a spell, and you can't even run. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised you can't starve. Classic was a really hard game, and us RuneScape 2 babies weren't ready for that. As sad as it sounds, the game would never return to its former glory. At the end of the first opening, player numbers seemed to stay strong, but declined back to pre-opening numbers just a few months later. The only reason it even got back to those pre-opening numbers wasn't because a set of legitimate players decided to stick around. It was instead because the bots were back. Sometime in early 2009, a player named RLN began work on a new bot
bot for Classic, with all the nice advances in software technology that earlier bots didn't have. RLN's bot was called Awesome Piece of Software, or APOS for short, and it instantly took off in the RuneScape Classic community. By the time Classic's first opening was over, pretty much all the old players were back online running APOS. In the background, Jagex continued to temporarily reopen Classic, not every few months like they said they would, but instead only about once a year. Although new players came and went like before, APOS users were really becoming the game's core community. Players changed their names to things like APOS bot, community events were held where they spammed the bot's name, and there were even a few drop parties. It was to the point where classic players who played legitimately would sign up for the APOS forums just so they had other people to talk to about the game and make trades. As weird as it sounds, APOS was the main reason RuneScape Classic was still alive. Even though its community was mostly bots, they were still paying members. Without them, I think Jagex probably would have pulled the plug on Classic very soon after it reopened. For those that bought it, it was an awesome time to play RuneScape Classic, but it wouldn't last forever. To celebrate RuneScape's 15th anniversary, Classic opened publicly again in January of 2016 to all paying members. Originally, this opening was going to be the longest one and would last until March, but for some reason, Jagex decided to leave the game servers open permanently, at least for the foreseeable future. By this time, RLN had moved on from APOS due to time constraints, but the project was passed on to another developer named Stormy in 2012. They're the person who got to 99 thieving on those guards from earlier, and also actually the one who provided me most of the information in this video, so big thank you to them. Stormy and other classic veterans felt like classic could be on its way out soon. Jagex had tried time and time again to revive the game with little success, and quite a lot of major game-breaking bugs had begun popping up. It was really only a matter of time before Jagex decided to pull the plug. So Stormy decided to write a script that would more or less collect all the information that the game would send it. Doing this allowed Stormy and others who used the script to gather tons of accurate history about the game that hadn't been recorded. Things like item drop rates, dialogue, skilling XP rates, and other small but important details that would certainly be lost to time. In total, Stormy managed to make over 6,000 edits to the RuneScape Classic Wiki before the game closed, and their character is instantly recognizable on many of the website's pages. It's kind of crazy to think that without this one bot, RuneScape Classic would have likely closed its doors so much sooner, and most of its fine details, the quirks that really make it what it is, would be completely lost. So for the first time in history ever, I'd like to say thank you botters. But stop messing up old school, I'm down bad on Zolra scales. But I guess it could be worse. Jagex could have just removed them from the game like they did back in the day with RuneScape's rarest item. I'm not even kidding, check that video out on the right hand side of the screen. 